Green. Owen, thank you very much. He's joined us from the train there on the way to the capital. Let's have a look at this uh, news item now that was that has the title of the show in it. Uh, doors open, but not wide open. This is Portugal presents new immigration plan. And this was in the Portugal resident uh, just yesterday. And a uh, the, the new legislation, I believe, that's been approved of, uh, well, let's find out, um, on Monday of this week, the plan eliminates special rules that acted as fast track for immigrants. Portugal president presented a new immigration plan on Monday, which puts an end to the country's manifestation of interest regime. Ah, manifestation de interesse, which allowed non-EU migrants to move to Portugal without an employment contract and request residency after paying social security for a year. I mean, that was that was always going to end in tears, wasn't it? After a certain volume, uh, Portugal will not have its doors closed to those who are looking for an opportunity, said Prime Minister Luís Montenegro during the presentation of the new plan. But we cannot go to the other extreme of having our doors wide open. As the PM put it, we believe we need to regulate immigration to give people dignity. So changes then. We've gone through, I mean, since we've been doing the Good Morning Portugal show, and incidentally, I noticed yesterday, I've published 1,500 podcasts since we started. And in that time, in those 1,500 podcasts, we've seen the change, haven't we? The change of the atmosphere, the change of the legislation, and how migration is working slash not working uh, here in Portugal. Let's get right up to date with this article then. Despite the tougher rules, the plan does not aim to streamline and prioritise the channels for immigrants to enter Portugal. That's in a quote there. For family reunification, young students, qualified professionals, although exactly which qualifications are needed has not been clarified, and nationals of Portuguese-speaking countries, the CPLP. The end of this special regime is only one of 44 measures detailed in the government's new immigration plan. The government has also announced the creation of a Foreigners and Borders Unit. That will be the UEF, another acronym to get used to, within Portugal's Public Security Police, the PSP, to monitor the presence of immigrants and set up emergency response centres and the creation of a mission structure with bunny ears there, to settle pending immigration cases. Says the plan, this new unit within PSP will be assigned responsibilities of border control, return control, currently the responsibility of Portugal's Agency for in Integration, Migration and Asylum, shortened to IMA, thankfully, and surveillance on national territory. In fact, continues the article, IMA itself is due to be restructured. It's like a Portuguese cafe. In it. Could someone shut my studio door for me? Thank you very much. Um, in fact, IMA itself is due to be restructured with the government removing its authority to instruct and decide on return processes, making the Council for Migration and Asylum autonomous, clarifying the responsibilities for attracting qualified immigrants, human capital in, in brackets, consolidating the observatory for migrations, that's the OM. This doesn't sound like a simplification so far, but bear with and redefining the locations of IMA offices. IMA's operational capacity is also due to be strengthened with ah, with more employees and technical resources, the plan states. So changes are afoot, how long they'll take to be implemented and have an impact we don't know, of course. This is the way that the government has found to tackle the huge backlog of pending cases, estimated to be at around 400,000 that IMA has been unable to deal with. IMA struggles have been well documented and the process of dismantling CEF, Portugal's previous border authority and dividing its responsibilities amongst several other separate authorities has been almost universally recognised as a failure by everyone except the government members who signed off on it at the time, of course. Uh, the agency's issues have now only been compounded by the news that around 100 staff members are looking to leave IMA. My goodness. With the, whether the government's new plan will be able to reverse the agency's fortunes remains to be seen, of course. But uh, it's a start, is it not? Elsewhere, the plan also aims to strengthen the response and processing capacity of the consular posts identified as priorities. That definitely needs to happen, doesn't it? We hear of some rum goings on at some of the uh, consulates. Um, and um, I can't remember what it's called now. That's, I've said it so many times, I can't remember what they, they call that, or that third party agency that processes um, people's applications. Anyway, 
that may be in this article or somebody will tell me in the chat, with the reinforcement of 45 staff members in 15 countries, a list that includes all the countries of the community of Portuguese language countries as a CPLP. The repeal of Articles 88 and 89 of the Foreigners' Law, which allowed foreign tourists to be legalised in Portugal, will be followed by a review of the general law by Parliament in the coming months, says the plan. However, all applications already submitted will be processed as long as they have been correctly filled in or have more than one year of social security deductions. The government get those <laughs> get those social security payments made um, if you want to improve your chance of staying in Portugal. The government is also committed to renewing expiring documents, which are due to expire this month. Ah, this is so that people aren't going to get stranded out of the country and to streamlining the procedures for granting visas and resident permits. I think they're going to get to yes or no quicker, aren't they? Which I think will be a great relief for all concerned to other Portuguese speaking citizens. Also mentioned in the plan is the creation of a mission structure with additional human material and financial resources made possible by extraordinarily high hiring measures. We could hire a few of the people coming in looking for work, which includes officials from the Agency for Integration, Migration and Asylum, IMA, uh, the inspectors from the former CEF and other professionals to be recruited. The mission structure will also be responsible for the expeditious assessment of requests and for stepping up face to face service to resolve existing backlogs. Well, there's a laxative afoot here within migration here in Portugal. According to Luís Montenegro, the Prime Minister, the new plan aims to implement the kind of rules that are needed in a country where immigration is growing at back-breaking speed. Oh, yes. And as we've reported before, uh, we've passed that million point, nearly one in 10 people in Portugal are foreigner. 13% um, of Portugal's workforce Having more than 400,000 people with pending regularization processes is synonymous with lack of capacity, care and humanistic approach, uh, said Montenegro, adding that Portugal must be able to provide an answer to people, even if it's a negative one. Yeah, fair enough. The worst thing is living in uncertainty, in unease, the PM said. Well, that's good. That I welcome that personally. What do you think? Let me know in the chat. We'll come to the chat in just a moment. The plan, I won't read it all. I'll put the link to it in the chat so that you can see for yourself um, if you want to. Plan blasted by left and far right, as you might imagine. Uh, I mean, I, we can guess what Shager might be saying, but uh, de Esquerda, Doc's party believes that the elimination of the manifestation of interest regime will only lead to more illegal immigration. Wow. And the final couple of paragraphs, the plan to tackle queues at Lisbon and Faro airports is also part of the changes, which will come as a great relief to anyone who's recently been stuck or who anticipates that in the two. Um, well, actually, there are three airports, aren't there? Porto, well done. You're not mentioned here. Lisbon and Faro airports. Uh, Things that are afoot, measures are afoot to tackle the queues there. So let me pop the uh, link to the article. I'm keen to know what you're saying in the chat. Can we do that sort of bit of um, domestic housekeeping sort of stuff? Actually, yeah, it's yeah, national sure. housekeeping, isn't it, with the uh, new immigration uh, policy? Yeah. We went through the Portugal residents, uh, Michael Brugio's uh, coverage of it yesterday from the Portugal resident. And here it is very handily summarised. Uh, mm -hmm. in the Portugal news, which is quite useful. So I bring it onto the screen for you now. What are uh, the, um, and I'll put, I actually might stitch this together um, with the coverage from yesterday. Oh, and there are comments. We do like a Portugal news comment. They're rather curmudgeonly, usually. Um, mm -hmm. What are the new immigration measures for Portugal? Prime Minister Luís Montenegro, very well dressed. I've got a picture I want to show you with his uh, immigration minister, which I thought was rather stylish, bringing back a, 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 a springing sexy back to politics, possibly here in Portugal. Um, he's guaranteed that the new immigration proposal is neither closed doors nor open doors. Maybe it's a revolving door like mm. you have at the airport. Monday, 3rd of June, the government announced 41 measures ranging from strengthening the agency for, uh, let's just call it IMA, shall we, to the end of the expression of interest procedure. That's the big thing. That's ending the expression of interest procedure and uh, how you can come here uh, and just work, pay con social security contributions and then apply afterwards, uh, I think after a year. Um, so that's ending the expression of interest, strengthening the response and processing capacity at consular posts, prioritizing entry channels for family reunification. We know a lot of people are stuck in that for young students and qualified professionals as well, create a 
check this out, guys. A mission structure to, to infinity and beyond to resolve the 400,000 pending processes urgently intervene in existing border control infrastructures, IT systems, and databases, patch up on the delay in implementing new border control systems, mitigate the high levels of congestion and delays that occur at the border crossings of Lisbon and Faro, strengthen the operational framework of the CPLP agreement, confirm and execute, um, that sounds rather serious, oh, resettlement and relocation commitments for beneficiaries and applicants, for international protection, develop and execute the national plan for the implementation of European Union's Migration and Asylum Pact. And on it goes. Anything in there that's come to your attention that you wish to comment about Fabrizio and Ian? And what do you think generally of this? It seems to be tightening up coming to Portugal. It seems to be, yes. It's yeah. a quite ambitious plan. Yes. Yeah, it's quite long, considering how bad it is. I guess that as with as I saw in the UK, I suppose this is the first reaction to uh, the increasing vote from Shaker as well, realistically, because that's why I noticed, you oh. know, obviously, as well, as we know from British and Britain before Brexit, yes. when Farrar became more powerful and suddenly the Conservative Party moved far more to, far more right to try and just, you know, stop him from stealing their votes. Up their votes. Yes, yes, and yes. I suppose this yes, is yes. the but, but that said, of course, you know, you also have to think that there are a lot of issues. We know that we know the wait time at the moment is ridiculous, that there's a lot of people who are here who maybe shouldn't be here or, you know, for whatever reason. Um, yeah, and so, a lot of people who want to be here but can't get can't become official. That's 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 exactly the, exactly, and that's one of the biggest issues, isn't it? Because it's not like many of these people aren't working or even trying to work, but you come yes. here and then you find out you're in a queue and nobody tells you anything. You don't know where it's going. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it's part of um as well a reaction to a situation that has that's probably arisen unexpectedly. You know, you don't always expect so many people to want to come to a country. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I mean, there's nothing. It, it could be a lot worse. <laughs> worse in yes. so much as you know, I mean, it could be really going much further, in a way. So you know, it's it's kind of milder solutions. It's trying to fill the gaps. Um, and I, yeah, I, I mean, there's nothing. You know, there's nothing overwhelming. Is that in there? You know, that, uh, I, I think you're right. It depends on who you are. But I think, yeah, nothing, nothing too scary in there. And in a way, quite reassuring that it looks like um, there is a firmer hand on the tiller of such affairs and the government are serious about it. And they're making the right noises, at least, because these are all proposals, of course. However, mm -hmm. it has been passed by the president. The president's rubber stamped this. So all of these proposals will be, uh, I guess there will be memos arriving on various bureaucratic desks around the government. Yeah, yes. then implementation will be carried out always, so yeah. within now and yes, whenever. <laughs> I mean, that's always the biggest obstacle with these, really. Is, you know, it finding is. the right people and doing it. Um, it. It's kind. Of, I suppose the reason why I mentioned the UK one was because it does feel a little bit like deja vu. You know what I mean? It's yes. kind of, I'm, I know, obviously, as you know yourself, over the last 10, 15 years, there have been there are steps like this in the UK to try and restrict immigration. Yeah. Which has clearly worked because it hit record highs last year. So, <laughs> well, the, that, well, the point of immigration is always yeah, about... Yeah. Oh, the point of immigration is always about restricting what is called the illegal immigration, which seems to be is something that you cannot really have control on. Mm -hmm. And actually it's think that it's tightening. Because being illegal, there's no way to gain votes trying to promote this, the, the end of illegal immigration because it's something that is out of any sort of legislation. And, and, yes. unfortunately, and unfortunately, yeah, because there's a channel of slavery and, uh, and, yeah. uh, and, and the political and social limbo. So, yeah, I guess. Yeah, the deja vu for me, I think, is how yeah. this, it, it's, it's, it's right and understandable that it should be on the table as something that's being looked at intelligently. However, when it ev whenever it does get tabled, it becomes hugely controversial, emotional, and people start falling out, and it becomes a divisive issue. And the very mm -hmm. issues that people want to address in a calm way, and when it's considered in a sensible way, like you know, human trafficking, slavery, yeah. the exploitation of people, that never gets, that doesn't seem to get addressed, does it? In the whole no. in the whole process, wherever whichever country you're in. So hopefully. Um, something will happen along those lines here in Portugal. Well, I'm gonna just, we got we discussed this the other day, and we came out with some. I mean, we were just saying that unfortunately, a lot of all, and one of the main. I mean, I'm Italian, 
in, in, in for the for the current political leadership to come into power um, immigration was one of the main uh, agenda being a very yeah. strongly populist but but clearly it, Italy is one of those places that leads on illegal immigration on farming and and and, mm. and nobody seems to be worried about that nobody seems to be worried about what's the the present and the future and the upcoming um, resolution for this for these people that lives and 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 in a full a full country that lives on on the, the enslaved uh, handling of this side of economy yes but it's always the one you know immigrants are always the one that come and take our jobs and like like I will, like I'm struggling to see the queue of young um, uh, Italian 15 or 17 years old queuing to go and pick up tomatoes at 40 degrees. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, most we love the cheap uh, food. We love the cheap food. And we'd rather course, yeah. deal with the... There, there's a truth on that, actually, that in the south of Italy, the, the, the mafia, the biggest earner of money is first off drugs, obviously. I think they make about 16 billion a year in drugs. But 10 billion a year comes from agriculture. And most of that is trafficking of people to work in... Is it really? That, illegally. That, that's the big issue, isn't which it? Is, which is, you know, an indication of where we are. So we, we pretend that we're going to stop all this illegal immigration, but then many economies rely on it. You know, if you don't have that, then you have to pay people very good wages. And then suddenly yeah, you, you get no inflation. Then that. everybody goes, yeah. oh my God, there's inflation. What mm. do you do now? <laughs> Yeah, it's a fascinating subject. There's no easy. There's no easy. No, that's for sure. Definitely no easy solution, but something I think that should be uh, talked about intelligently, calmly, and hopefully we will get to the bottom of some of these most the horrific aspects of it. Back to the Portugal news, because I do like a comment over there. Well, I'm not necessarily liking them, but I'm amused by them. Um, but, <laughs> but today, immediately, what is being done to process, process renewals, initial temporary residence permits? What is being done today? In, invert, in, in, in capital letters there from Susan in Lisbon, who's obviously frustrated about not being processed. Um, the government has no other choice but to revoke Article 88, 89. That was the previous. Uh, that's, I think that's to do with the manifestation of interest, the earlier uh, migration law, since the pending number of cases piling up and has gone totally out of control, says uh, Summon Deb, also in Lisbon. With all these measurements announced above, I'm sure the immigrants living in Portugal will be benefited significantly. Immigrants Help Centre... The Immigrants Help Center, Family Unification, SNS, Housing Crisis, etc. We being immigrants expect from the government, including SIGA, support and should feel that we are not isolated and that we are treated equally. So a, a request there to be treated with yeah. dignity, which the government has responded to, to be fair as well. And finally, from L, setting up all of this proposed government bureaucratic stuff seems totally impossible since they can't even organize one department, IMA. And that's L from another part of Portugal. Um, and that's a fair point, isn't it? You know, we are in the midst of a massive reorganization where Seth left off with, with all of these 400,000 cases to process. How are they going to add to that workload? I don't know. They, they, yeah. They're they going to need to do something, aren't they, to make this work? That's for sure. Yeah. And of course, I mean, that's the point. Is then it's always down to the number of people and getting people to actually <clears throat> understand what they have to do. You know, you're suddenly employing people from one department to another department to uh, take over something. Yes. Which- they don't know anything about so you know, that's going to take a considerable amount of time it's not the not, you've got to wave the wand today and everything will magically happen tomorrow so, mm, that's you know, right. we're still months away from anything realistically changing it's true, it's true isn't it and, and you can imagine from our point of view yeah all these great things and the magic wand of the government being waved but actually in, inside the halls of, of the civil service they're probably dreading any further ideas or memos coming their way 